guys, it's SJ, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna take the new preschool survey that Kate Middleton has launched. It is called Five Big Questions on the Under Fives and it's been all over the press this week. Kate Middleton, Duchess of Cambridge, has launched it here in the UK asking everyone to take part, everyone, parents with under fives um, or older children who have obviously then once been under five, um, to do this survey to answer these five big questions and then they're going to release the results and because obviously Kate Middleton's involved, the NSPCC are a charity supporting it and lots of professionals working in um, early years, maybe it'll make some big changes like they were saying that the first five years is so, so crucial and Kate Middleton was talking about this a lot, saying that all the issues, people that she's met since um, working with the royal family, like people struggling with homelessness, um, addiction, um, mental health issues, she's like a lot of it, she was so fascinated by, was going right back to the first five years of her life, which kind of freaked me out as a mum, because I was like, Oh my god, I really am screwing them up for life. Um, so I'm interested to see what these five big questions are. I have no idea what they are. I'm going to take the survey and chat you through my answers and I'll link the survey below and let's see what we reckon. Is this going to be decent? Is it just stuff we've heard before? I don't know. So question number one is, what do you believe is most important for children growing up in the UK today to live a happy adult life? and it is multiple choice, so it is good physical and mental health, good friendships and relationships, access to opportunities, or access to a good education. Um, I feel like access to a good education, maybe it's like a bit of a no-brainer, but um, it's just so important, isn't it? And education, but then it's under five, it's like under five children in the UK really start at age five, so maybe I don't believe that because if you look at in Sweden, my husband's Swedish, and um, they didn't start school till they were seven, so maybe education isn't that important back then, but it just is for children growing up. Good friendships and relationships are really, really important, and physical and mental health is maybe the most crucial thing then. Um, I think I'm going to change my mind and go with physical and mental health because I do think that that's where in the under fives, if we can get them out as much as possible, if they have as much physical activity and emotional support for the parents and their own emotional support as preschoolers, maybe it's that. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. <laughs> I don't know, maybe this is right, but there, it is an interesting question. Um, so question number two is, which of these statements is closest to your opinion? Um, it is the, primarily the responsibility of parents to give children aged 0 to 5 the best chance of health and happiness. It is primarily the responsibility of others in society to give the children the best chance. It is the shared responsibility of parents and others in society to give them the best chance or you just don't know. I think that um, it's definitely, it definitely should be much more of a shared responsibility. If I was alone, um, battling and at times you feel very 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 alone um, you know it can't all be on our shoulders like I was full-time working mum and I had to go back to work when the children were under one so it can't just be we, I can't possibly have the opinion that it's primarily the responsibility just of the parents and um, because there's so many great caregivers out there so it's obviously not the others in society is definitely a more shared responsibility and it would be nice if parenting was talked a bit more like that as well like if we recognize you know from the minute you become a mother um you're flooded with a lot of support and then that lasts about three weeks <laughs> doesn't it and then it's like slowly dwindles away and you're like what happened suddenly i was like top of the world most special important person with this new baby and all this advice and help and then literally like a couple of weeks later no one cares and when you go back to work i found it when i needed the help the most my mental state was very low and i felt really really tough and nobody cared people were like oh have you gone back to work so i didn't really notice and i'm like it was as big a deal becoming a working parent as big a shift in my life and as emotional as becoming a mum for the first time ever so yeah i think first of all it has to be shared responsibility secondly it has to be parents i think parents are oh I was only one, so I don't have to do multiple choice this time. Sneezy, but let me know what you think of that one below. 
How much do you agree or disagree with this statement? The mental health and well-being of parents and carers has a great impact on the development of their child or children. Um, I think you can be struggling a lot and be suffering from depression or be really struggling in your own life. You know, none of us sometimes, you know, I've had three children and sometimes I found out I was pregnant at a really difficult time with my first baby. Um, second baby, it was um, pregnancy after a loss. So there was a huge different feeling of emotion as well around how I felt emotionally a bit unstable, I would say, during his pregnancy. Um, and then the third baby was probably the happiest I'd been. And then I had a really difficult time after she was born, not to do with um, my nuclear family, but there were some difficult times happening around me and I, I really affected me negatively and I felt very much like I could keep my head above water and I could keep them happy and I could keep the, the wheels spinning. So it's not like we are unresourceful as parents, like we can be having the toughest time ever and we get up and we smile and we, we survive and we help our kids thrive. Um, but, you know, I do strongly agree that um, it does have a great impact on our children, like they pick up on more than we know and even at a tiny, tiny, tiny age, like I had a very happy childhood um, and I remember the playfulness, I remember the fun, I remember the gentleness um, and that was probably, then I also remember if there was ever a tough time with my mum and dad felt alone, like I remember it, like I remember it so strongly, so I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say, but I do strongly agree with that. Question number four, which of the following is closest to your opinion of what influences how children develop from the start of pregnancy to age five? From the start of pregnancy? Um, mostly the traits a child is born with, so nature. Mostly the experiences of a child in the early years, nurture. Both nature and nurture equally, or I don't know. And funny enough, I've put some thought into this because um, in my family, there are people who've had very, very tough early years. Um, and I always thought, hmm, that's interesting. Like, can you survive a difficult, traumatic childhood and come out smiling and not have that cycle repeat? Um, and you certainly can. So that must be there for your nature shining through. But then equally, you know, no kid is nature can be changed because no child is born bad and children born into bad, tough situations, you know. There's wonderful systems out there like adoption and things like that which show you that nurture is so crucial. Like maybe I'm saying both equally. Last question. Which period of a child or young person's life do you think is the most important for health and happiness in adulthood? Um, start of pregnancy to five years, five to 11, 11 to 16, 16 to 18, 18 to 24, all that all equally important, all you don't know. I would have said before this survey, um, happiness in adulthood that may be the 11 to 16, like secondary school, um, because that felt the most linked in my personal experience to how happy I felt in adulthood. Like, if I go back to, um, you know, the foundations of my days, it would be my secondary school experience, but that's probably because I had a really stable and easy um, childhood. Like, my 0 to 5, my 5 to 10 was really, really stable and secure grew up with, you know, me and my sister in a loving household with a mum and a dad and there wasn't much drama. That came later. <laughs> um, so I don't know, but then what I'm understanding from this survey, from hearing them this be talked about a lot, is that the 0 to 5 is apparently one of the most fundamental times. Maybe I'll cheat and put the start of pregnancy to 5. Start of pregnancy feels bloody scary. Like, pregnancy is so difficult. It's like, do we have to? Like, worry about their health and happiness in adulthood from the second I find out I'm pregnant, like, oh, <laughs> that's a bit much. I actually gonna write I don't know because I don't know. And maybe Kate's gonna really take my opinion on. <laughs> um, and then the last question is, is there anything else you would like to tell us about your views on the early years of childhood? And you can enter further information. So I guess this would also be an algorithm where they answer it. So the questions are interesting ones. Um, I feel like it addresses that there should be better mental health support for parents and that there should, maybe there's gaps, but we've really focused in our support in pregnancy and then just kind of let it filter away. And there's no real organization that I feel um, you automatically go to. And that's why like, you know, I'm online because I felt so sad when my young middle child was um, one, when I went back to work full time as a working mum of two children 
I felt the saddest I'd ever felt. So sad because um, I just felt like um, I was not being a good mum because I was working full time in a big job in London. So I was out the door home late. The children were getting the worst of me. I was getting the worst of the children. So I felt a disconnection with them. And I felt like my life was um, that I was being just working for no reason just to pay for somebody else to enjoy my life. Like my nanny was basically enjoying my life. It was like the opposite of that. What was that? Hand across the cradle where I just felt so jealous of you know, I'm paying this woman and then she's sending me pictures of her pushing my kids in the swings. Like, that's what I want to be doing with my life and it's not fair because I can't because um, I need to work to keep a roof over the head and you feel the pressure and you feel down and that's why I turned online actually because straight away I felt relief and I found like talking about things openly kind of helped me to, um, it was cathartic for me and then it was like I could say anything um because pe somebody out there would get it hopefully the survey is going to address the fact that we need more support later on in life as well and the working pressures and there are ways that you know the government could ease our working pressures better flexible working like it breaks my heart the amount of friends i've got who um feel so trapped in in their jobs and no chance of progression um they're just but no get out clause because they can't afford any other way um, and the flexibility isn't there the school time hours of being able to work and um and that pressure being on both parents like dad's being allowed to do it as well i feel like they're still very much a mama's caregiver and we are definitely more judged as working parents but let me know what you think hopefully it's been interesting let me know if you've heard of the survey obviously if you're not in the uk you can't take the survey but if you are in the uk then maybe you go ahead and take it if you are a blogger or an instagrammer or a youtuber maybe do the same as i've done and share your opinion on it because i really believe that what kate middleton is trying to do is to be the catalyst to open these conversations and we as parents should embrace that and be like great somebody is talking about us somebody is talking about mums somebody's talking about the fact that we can sometimes be really overlooked um in society and just seen as you know we never get a thank you we never get a um a well done and parenting in this country you know isn't looked at as always the best in the world you know that's you know we just need some help <laughs> there's so many areas so there's five easy questions there they are deep and interesting i'll link it below hope this has been interesting a little bit let me know below <laughs> and i'll see you on my next video bye guys